In this video, I am going to discuss what does it mean by a program, why we write program and how it is possible to write a program. So we learn about these basic things. See in the previous videos already we have discussed that our computers can understand binary form of language. So there are some predefined set of instructions that a processor or a CPU can understand and we have to use those instructions for performing a task. Now what does it mean by task here? So let us understand why we actually we need computers. What is the purpose of using computers? We use computers for performing computational tasks. So what is this computational task? All those tasks which are done using pen and paper, the computations by using formulas, by using any expression, we put the values and get the answer. We use various formulas or various steps. So computation work that is paper work. So for that purpose we use computers, right? So that computation work can also be done using calculator. Yes, it can be done using calculator. So let us understand first how we use a calculator and then I'll show you how we can use computers and what does it mean by programming. We use calculator like this. See for example, if I have two numbers and I want to add them, first number is 13 and second number is 27 and I want to add them. So take a calculator, hit first number 13 and then press plus, then hit second number 27, then press equal to sign. So I'll be pressing plus sign and equal to sign and finally I get the answer that is 40. So I can use a calculator for adding two numbers, a simple task. So I don't need a computer for this one. Then next, if I have a list of numbers and I want to calculate average of those numbers. So I'll just write down few numbers here. 10, 15, 8, 6, 9, 5, 12, 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I will add few more numbers 11 and 16. So I have total 10 numbers and I want to find average of these numbers. Then how to use a calculator. Now watch it. I have to enter or hit one zero for the first number, then plus the next number, then plus the next number, plus next number. I have to go on adding them and that sum will be getting accumulated. So finally, I'll get the total of all these numbers. Like total is 105 for these numbers. Then I should also have the count of numbers. Total how many numbers I have, 10 numbers I have. Then that total I should divide it by 10. Then I get the result that is 10.5. Here calculator doesn't know how to find the average. I should know how to find the average. So for finding an average, I should have the list of numbers and I should go on adding them. And then I should divide them by number of numbers that is 10. Then I get a result, right? This is not a simple operation. This was a simple operation. This is having a procedure. Yes, there is a procedure for finding average. Now, similarly, there is a procedure for finding the maximum number or the total number of numbers. There is a procedure for searching a particular number in this list. So for various things, there are some procedures. And if you have learned about statistics, then I want to find a mean of these numbers or median of these numbers. So there is a procedure for this. If you want to sort these numbers, then there is a procedure. So calculator doesn't know the procedure means the steps involved for completing a particular task. Now, how we know it, our teachers has taught us that procedure. So we know the procedure, right? So same procedure, can we teach it to calculator itself so that just we will tell we want average. It should ask what are the numbers. These are the numbers and it should give us the result without asking us how to do it. We want our calculator to be trained on this one. So it means we want a programmable calculator. Yes, that's it. So the extension of calculator I can say or the next level to a calculator is nothing but computer. Computer is a programmable computational device. We can define a procedure by giving all the steps one by one to our computer system and we call it as a program and the program uh, computer system or a CPU processor will execute those set of instructions and give us the result. So that's what is programming. That's it. This is what we use computers and what is programming I have told you. Now more about program, more detail and clear picture about a program I will give you.
Now I have taken a list of numbers. So this is a list of numbers. Let us say the procedure is same. I want to find average. So what are these numbers? These numbers are nothing but data. This is data. Then for performing average, there is a procedure, right? So that procedure, the steps involved in that one. So those are nothing but instructions. So we can say these are instructions, right? So there are two things now data and the instructions upon that data so a program is nothing but collection of data and the set of operations or instructions on that data so we have to focus on only two things in our programs what is the data you have and what you do want what you want to do with that data so what are the steps what is the procedure see without data there is no need of instructions right instructions are useless and if you have just data no instruction then you don't know the results right so these are the two important parts of a program so we have to focus on this one we have to learn how to represent our data and also we have to learn how to write on the instructions that will execute or compute the data to get the result so this is what learning programming now one important thing for learning programming you should already know the procedure right this is the very 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 important point here the most of the students get confused they think that learning programming will make them learn procedure no learning procedure is different and writing programs is different so we are going to learn two things how to write a program and how to write our procedure right how to convert our procedure into a program so a program contains data and the set of instructions now let us come to the computer side see this is our machine a uh, computer machine right so let us say this is cpu now this is myself now language of a cpu is zeros and ones binary how to represent data in that one data in that one in the form of zeros and ones how to represent instructions that is also in the form of zeros and ones both data as well as instructions are in the form of zeros and ones that is binary then what is my language my language is english language so instructions are in english and the data is also english like if i if you ask me to read these numbers i will say 10 15 9 6 8 this is english numbers are also in english if you know any other language then these numbers are called with the different words are there different names are there for them and the figures are also different right so this is english this is english so my data is also english and the instructions are also english and cpu's languages machine language is zeros and ones so this is binary this is machine language and this is natural language that is human beings language now we want our machine to learn our procedures so we have to learn either machine language or we should develop our machine so that they understand natural language any one of this right now either way it's not possible either way it's not possible we can't learn machine language and computers are not so much developed that they understand natural language now recent computers they are having some artificial intelligence that are useful for pulling the data but not for programming it so for programming it machine should understand natural language so this is not yet happening right then what we need now we need some intermediate language so that's easy for me also easy for machine also so that's what here comes programming languages the programming languages that we use like c c plus plus java c sharp vb python all these languages they come under programming languages so we learn this language and whatever our procedures are we transform them in this form and these languages will help us to transform that procedure into machine language so from natural language to programming language then programming language to machine language translation is done so this translation is not there we learn it we have to learn it right if that translation is available then anybody can do programming just you say it will become a program so this we have to learn a programming language and write our procedures in that language then from this language there is something called compiler or interpreter right i'll just write in short we are going to learn that in this ne next video compiler or interpreter will translate that into machine language so this is how programming languages are useful for writing programs so we should learn some programming language so that's all about what does it mean by program and why we need programming let us revise the things very quickly so i started with a calculator calculator is not a programmable device 
now we want our machines to know the procedure just we will give the data we will not know the procedure so for that we need a language so that we can write a program so what a program will contain data and the set of instructions upon that data these are the two main part or ingredients of a program but this has to be written in machine language we don't know machine language so we introduce some intermediate language that is a programming language that is helpful for us and it will translate that into machine language machine code and the program that is understandable by cpu so that's all in this video in the next video i'll explain you what does it mean by compiler and what does it mean by interpreter what are the differences by taking few examples i'll explain them that i have already used their name here that's all